Hey, welcome everyone uh, to today's presentation, doubling down on local market reports. This is uh, the last of our series of uh, thriving and not just surviving in today's uh, critical economy. And one of the things that I've said at the beginning of most of our webinars, Randy, you've been in a couple on, of them, is that you have to arrive to survive. And you guys are doing that right now. You have arrived to today's presentation. So you're here and you're ready to go. So uh, we're so excited to have you all with us. And it is just now uh, 12 o'clock. So we're going to get started. I'm going to get started by introducing our uh, wonderful panelists. Uh, that have joined us today. We're so excited to have these two individuals uh, on the line today. They have done an amazing job of taking advantage of the local reporting uh, in their area. And I'm just going to preface this. If you're using any system at all, even your MLS system to create market reports, that's what is important. We want to be sure that you're communicating to your database regardless of what tools you're using. And you're going to find that these two are actually experts in using the tools um, that uh, they have been uh, provided with Brivity and uh, are probably going to be speaking on that behalf. And everything that they are doing um, as far as the way that they're doing it and the, the things they're going to share with you um, are going to be universal. So, uh, Gail, I'm going to start with you since you're first on the uh, on the agenda list. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and um, just a quick update on, on maybe why why you're here. Okay, I didn't hear that last part, but I think I heard uh, of why you're here. That part, right? Yeah, okay. the, the original. Is, uh, tell us a little bit. Of, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, a little bit about myself. So I've been in the business um, yeah. three, four years, a little over three years. Um, to be honest, I was never a realtor before, didn't know anything about the business at all, other than I had utilized the services of realtors off and on over the years to, you know, buy real estate, but um, didn't know anything about anything about the business. Um, I spent my life in corporate America um, at, at the corporate level and retired, um, the first time when I was in my uh, early 40s, retired the second time in my late 40s because I got bored and went back to work, which is why I came <laughs> to real estate because I got bored and decided I needed to do something else. And my son said, hey, go get your real estate license. So I, anyway, I got my real estate license and I've only been a part of the Ben Kitty team and only been affiliated with um, Keller Williams. So I'm fairly, I'm pretty, pretty rookie at this. Um, and so the Ben Kinney team and his systems and models are, to be honest, are pretty much the only systems and models that I've ever used or um, utilized. Nice. And you've had a lot of success uh, in the short time that you've been in the business. You've had a lot of success uh, with um, uh, really establishing a good, a good and even though you had the right models uh, with uh, Ben Kinney, uh, it's a lot of the efforts that you put in. Um, to uh, that have have driven that success is that right? Um, yeah, you know here here's the deal. I I tell people that you know I'm not an expert by any means because I don't have enough time in the in the business to be considered that. But um, real estate to me is is fairly simple. Um, it kind of consists of three um, kind of three facets in my opinion. Um, having systems and models to be able to implement. So thank goodness for Ben and his systems and models because I was able to follow those and um, being new and not having any preconceived ideas before then, I just said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to tell do what they tell me to do. So that's probably nice. number one. Um, number two is um, effort and um, just having a good work ethic. You know, I grew up with a good work ethic. You know, I'm from that era. Um, so just having a good work ethic. And I think number three is answering your phone, to be honest, answer your phone. Um, so, you know, so that you can deal with your clients on a timely basis and they realize that you're there for them. So yes. that's kind of the three things really that, that made me successful. I think. <clears throat> that's fantastic. Tell you to do and be responsive. Those, those are, those are really, uh, simple things to follow as well. Randy, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, my friend. Yeah, <clears throat> so April 1st, April Fool's Day was my fifth year in the business. Um, I kind of came into the business from 
uh, corporate America, uh, working in retail. I knew for a number of years that uh, for me anyway, with a growing family, that retail was not going to be sustainable long term, both in terms of the commitment of my time and in terms of the relative pay that you could expect from there. Um, I worked in coffee and, uh, you know, I always say that income is relative to the product that you sell. And uh, for me, selling a $5 product was not going to get me financially where I wanted to go working in a corporation anyway. So um, I happened to come into real estate. I joined a small uh, local brokerage that um, was owned by a friend and it was uh, good. I will say, I know this is not a brevity um, um, exclusive sort of uh uh, call here, but um, that friend wanted me to get into and use top producer. And um, as uh, Ben Kinney would say, top producer is the cream of the crap. And um, I did not like um, uh, top producer so much that I actually left that brokerage. So when I left that brokerage, um, I, knew I, I knew I needed to find a CRM. So I did lots of research, came across uh, Brivity at its infancy, I, I come to find out. Out, um, right around two, 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 2017 and um, one thing that I missed about Top Producer was they had something there called market reports and our market snapshots market is what snapshot. it was called yeah market yep. snapshots yep. and I knew that that is uh, something that I absolutely needed to find right away and it just so happened that um, at that point in time uh, market reports was just uh, in its infancy sort of beta testing and was only a part of the entire platform. So uh, even though I was new and branching out into my own sort of venture um, with uh, a brokerage anyway, I knew I needed to uh, plug into that. So I swallowed the entire Brevity platform at that time, which was uh, for me uh, going out on faith but I knew that those market reports were very, very important for me to hop into. And um, it's certainly been nice. a critical part of what I do um, with the people in my database. Critical part of what you do uh, with the people in your database. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm hearing here is we have two people that came from corporate America. Um, I think the, the, the combined experience of you both in real estate is uh, less than 10 years. Uh, which is totally awesome because we're showing that if you right, if you do the right things uh, and you do them consistently, you're going to see the results. And found through our research, uh, market reports are those things that do that. In fact, we have found that market reports uh, can get you up to a 33% open uh, finding our, with our Brevity market reports. Uh, you may want to measure uh, the uh, success that you're seeing out of yours because it is it is a very powerful tool. So let's start really quickly, if you don't mind, with a promise. I, I'm going to start with my promise, and then Gail and Randy, I'm going to ask you guys to give a quick promise, uh, maybe something like uh, you're going to give full disclosure about everything that you know, uh, and then we can provide your contact information. Randy, you've done this before. So my, my promise is I'm bringing to amazing uh, people to represent uh, talking to you guys about how market reports are going to help you um, stay uh, top of mind and um, being as the local for, uh, when people are thinking of buying or selling real estate. Um, so that's my promise. I'm going to bring that to you. I'm also promising we're going to be on time. So if you came uh, spend an hour with us, exactly what you're going to do, spend an hour with us. And then um, I also promise we're going to have fun. This is going to be energetic, exciting, and I will answer any questions if you have <clears throat> during the presentation. I'll try to make notes of really smart things that our guests are saying, and I will share that with the audience. So Randy, I'm going to start with you. Do you have any promises that you want to sure. give to the to our group? Yeah. So, uh, so here's my promise, and um, I'm a firm believer in what Zig Ziglar had to say, and that is paraphrasing that you can get everything that you want out of this life. Um, so long as you're willing to help others get what they want out of theirs. And so I'm very transparent, very open. I was talking with my uh, wife and 17-year-old son the other day about what I might share today. And um, my 17-year-old, 
who has worked with me in the brokerage and in the business for a little bit said, oh, you're going to give them the secret sauce. <laughs> and I, I'm not so sure that I'm going to give necessarily the secret sauce, but um, especially within 60 minutes or whatever we have here. But I am very, very <laughs> transparent, very, very honest and um, very willing to share. So whatever we don't cover here, I'm more than happy to jump on a call. I've been um, both the beneficiary and recipient of a lot of great coaching and mentoring over the years. Gail being one of them, she and I had a call not too long ago about how she kills on open houses and such. And so, um, you know, she's given me great information and I'm happy to share whatever information that, um, that, uh, that, that I can to help others. So. Thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Gail, what do you think for us? I'm going to piggyback on Randy. Um, I 100% agree. I, I think one of the coolest things that I found about this industry is the willingness to share. It has, to, to be honest, I come from an environment prior to that, that anything that your company did was this big gigantic secret. And if you let anybody else know, they were gonna kick your rear. And I found in this industry, that the more you share and the stronger that we all become, the better we all become. And Ben is a huge um, proponent of that, of sharing. So um, I'm gonna share everything that I can. And like Randy, I'm always available. I did uh, uh, a little seminar earlier this week on market reports, believe it or not, um, just because I had made a post on Facebook and somebody reached out to me. And so somebody else, uh, um, did all the work as far as organizing it. And I just popped in and was able to spend about 45 minutes with those people that I had never met. And now I've got new friends on the East coast. So, um, anyway, so wow. I'm willing to do anything that needs to be done to, um, make us all better. Love that. And you are exactly right. Ben is a big fan of sharing. And that's why he asked me to do these uh, web for the industry. Um, as we mentioned, we want to make sure that anybody can take advantage of the lessons that we're teaching, regardless of what system you use. Although we'd love for you to use our Brevity platform and you can always find out more about us. Um, you can see the information up on top. All right. Um, so we're going to ask your prompt. We want you to do the three things that we talk about. Put them into action right away, and if you can, let us know throughout the presentation what those two or three things is so that we can know that we are hitting um, all the right cylinders. So here's what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to talk about like who we're sending local market report to. I think you're going to be uh, surprised at the answer uh, of number one. And then this is a really interesting time. We're going to talk about the complexities of sending out a message like the market reports um, today. And then of course, uh, when we're sending stuff, we have to accompany it with things um, to say. We might even be um, uh, urged to say something prior to or after receiving that market report. What do you say? And we're gonna need to know how are these activities, these actions that we're taking, how are they gonna benefit us as agents? It's really what we're after is a benefit uh, one coming from contribution is important too. We have to see a return on our efforts, see what our ROI is. Then we'll look at what we do next. You know, it's always important to have your next action item uh, available. And then lastly, we're going to say, um, you know, what is, uh, say, what are those ideas that are, are, we can put it into place right now today that you all can take into action. And what's going to happen throughout the presentation is we're going to be giving you ideas uh, that you'll take away. So we'll, by the time we get to number six, we might already have a full plate. And if and when we do, we want to know what you all are learning from that. Uh, my panelists, my guests, do you guys have any other, uh, anything else you want to add to that agenda or audience? Do you have any thoughts on that? Does that look good? Looks good to me. Yeah. Solid list. All right, let's move on. So, um, who do I put on local market reports? I, that, that's a, that's an important question. We have a big database. You know, we've got a lot of people. We have good opportunity to talk to people. Gail, who do we put on a local market report? Well, this is an interesting one for me, and I'll tell you why. So, when I first started um, utilizing the market reports, um, I did what you know, it's natural, like who wants a market report? Well, a seller wants a market report, obviously. So I um, started out putting my sellers on market reports. But 
um, through kind of um, watching what was happening with market reports and um, noticing that I was getting a lot more interaction, action, open, um, you know, people reaching out to me through these market reports versus even listing alerts. About a year ago, I think it was about a year ago, I made the decision that if they're alive, they have an email address in our my system, they get a market report. And lo and behold, in fact, I was a little bit late for this call today because I was on the phone with a client who reached out to me because of the market report, but was really came into my system as a buyer. And um, anyway, um, made an ap appointment for him with him next week. He's probably not going to do anything for about a month, but um, but I get actually more action, believe it or not. Um, from my buyers off mark reports and I even do my sellers. And part of that might just be because of the volume. I have a lot more buyers in my database than I do sellers. So if you just look at strict volume, but anyway, everybody gets a market report. I think we lost Kevin. Um, awesome. I'll go, I'll go we'll here. Go you can do it without. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. We, I got the agenda. I copied and pasted it. So the um, who gets on a, a local market report in my database is a far more uh, sellers. I would think that about 70 to 80 percent at least of my database are homeowners. I got into the business five years ago and uh, did so via cold call telephone prospecting. So because of that, my database is just rich of uh, homeowners and possible sellers. Now, um, over time, I've sort of evolved who I actually put on those market reports. Um, I have within my um, process of cold calling, which I still do, my database again is rich for that right now, um, is I would, it was definitely more permission based. So I would have the first call with them. It was a cold call. Are you thinking of selling their house? And yes, I'd go for the email and then I would um, then follow up in two to three weeks and just to say, hey, wanted to check in and then ask them if they would be interested in subscribing to our uh, the local market report so they can keep up in their neighborhood. Now, um, I came to that and that was working very well, but I also had a bunch of people in my database already who weren't already subscribed. So I sort of made the executive decision based upon value and that value being, do I believe that market reports add value to our conversation and ultimately to the homeowner? And I feel like they really, really do. So I just made it, I just made an executive decision to just start automatically subscribing everybody to uh, market reports. And I'm shocked, actually, how very few people have unsubscribed or complained in any way, shape, or form about it. Um, so, so that's who is on it. And uh, to Gail's point, I have not gone to the extent that she has to subscribe uh, buyers to it. That being said, I do have sellers who are also buyers. And for one reason or another, I've had just some uh, random buyers who happen to be subscribed to market reports and I've sold houses because these buyers were using the market report for their search and mm -hmm. um, I think there's a significant value to the market report for a buyer's perspective because aside from showing them homes that are active pending and sold it also shows them at least in the brevity platform shows them the direction that the market is heading um, and how many homes are changing and and the statuses of that those uh, homes so I feel like there is to Gail's point a whole lot of value to be adding so that's one of the things that I'll be doing in 2020s adding more of my buyers um, to those lists uh, for market reports as well for the areas that they're looking to buy because again a good portion of my people in my database are sellers who s another portion of them are also sellers and buyers and usually those people sellers and buyers are subscribed for the market reports for their current home and the listing alerts for where they're looking but that doesn't mean that I can't also subscribe them to a market report for where they're looking and you can do so in brevity 
via school district now. You can do so um, in the Brevity um, platform via um, county and city, and you can you know segment it however you want. So there's a lot of power within that. So that's for us, for me, who is on the local uh, market reports. So <clears throat> I don't know if we have Kevin back or not, but uh, Gail, it looks like it's you and me. We have definitely have other people in attendance here, so maybe we can just keep on uh, trucking. So, uh, oh, there he is. So um, we're just moving on to this, uh, question number two, unless Gail wanted to add some additional insight into question number one. Uh, no, I think you covered it. Um fairly well i um and i agree randy um i get a lot less unsubscribe in my market reports very few <clears throat> unsubscribes in that in that market report platform versus in my listing alerts mm -hmm. so um that's the other thing that i notice and and one of the other reasons it's a great tool and and my buyers do seem to look at those market reports for the same reason that you um mentioned and in that that they can see the trends yeah. you know if the market's kind of going up down days on markets are extending contracting so i think it's a very helpful tool and it does definitely add value yep contribution i know we had a conversation about that on tuesday about contribution and such so value and contribution is good so <clears throat> i don't know if we have kevin back fully here yet or not or Thank you all no so audio. much for being such oh, a professional. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. You guys hear me okay? Yeah, this Thank is no different so than a listing appointment when the dog is on your lap and you didn't expect that, but this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was something else right there. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> Not experienced that one. Um, so uh, thank you all very much. So we talked about who we put on local market reports. I'm mm -hmm. going to assume you guys did a good job. Yep. Ready? Fantastic. Well, thank you for that. All right, let's move on. So, is it is this a time? Did did we dig into that uh, being an issue um, as far as uh, like is it okay to send out a market report now? I mean, is it is this a time to talk to people about real estate? What kinds of uh, kinds of things is happening? Randy, you want to lead off with this one? And I'll sure. Piggy. Yeah, I, I've seen. Um, I guess I've seen an uptick in the number of first time viewers of the market reports that I have set up. So I have, I'm staring at the dashboard now, I certainly have plenty of people who viewed it 18 and 21 times. A couple of people, they view it every two weeks. You know, that they hit their inbox and they open it up and they're just like, you know, religious about it. it the first couple of times I thought, oh, maybe they're gonna be selling pretty soon. But then, you know, after, uh, a year and a half of it, I realized oh, they just click on everything. So that's it's far less for that. But I I have seen a, a definite uptick where people have been subscribed for over a year or two, and um, never clicked on any of the links within the email. Um, to now all of a sudden I'm seeing these pop up one and two times. So it says to me that people are interested. People are interested because um, they don't know what's going on in in the economy as a whole, and uh, how does that affect their values? And and uh, the the report gives them great insights into that. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. I, I'm seeing the uptick too of the first time people opening it up. Um, I think it is an important time to. Um, to, for them to say it. I think there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Um, a lot of people are worried. Um, some people are scared. And I think that if we can give them information so that they have, you know, for most people, the their home is their largest asset. And people are concerned about that asset. You know, they've seen, you know, if they have other things like stocks or bonds, especially stocks right now, they've seen those, you know, they've lost some value there. And so they're concerned about it. So I think it's more than appropriate right now to um, to be sending them. I think we have to be very careful with our conversations that we're having with clients right now, to be honest. Um, I yep. think we need to come from a, a, a point of caring and checking in a lot and checking in just to see how they're doing, not checking in with, oh, how are you doing? And by the way, do you want to sell your house tomorrow? Um, I think we have yeah. to be very careful with that. So, yeah, that, 
Yeah, I mean, you're you're segueing us beautifully into that into that next into that next subject, and there. I have a saying, and Randy's heard me say this before. It's it's like that was so February of 2020, you know, because there are things that we could, <laughs> there's things that we could have done in February of 2020 that we just simply don't do. Yeah. We right, we would have been able to call them and say, hey, uh, this is purely a business call. This isn't time for chit chat. I mean, could you imagine having that call with somebody right now would be devastating. And and you don't even know where they are. Uh, Randy, I think it was you that said it or somebody else with brilliance said, we need to meet them where they are. I keep hearing that com that comment over and over in, in the calls that I'm in. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. Like, do you, there, we have it sounds like we have a couple different types of people that are looking at these market reports we have those that are coming from curiosity just because it's they're seeing maybe that their neighbors are taking action on that are happening maybe they were already taking action and now it's more in their their view they're thinking about it more um and then we have others that are doing it through necessity so do we are we looking at ways of how do you all determine what to say to each of them or and or are you saying the exact the same thing? Um, Randy, I'll, I'll start with you. Sure. So, sure. <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I think, so for me, it became sort of, um, I started, you know, I wanted to know when we're specifically talking about uh, these market reports and um, I, I have a ways to go in terms of, uh, fully implementing and using and fully leveraging um, the market reports to their to their maximum. Um, that said, I have right now in my database about 1,200 people subscribed to it and about 400 more to add and probably another maybe another 500 or so people buyers that um, I could add to that as well at least probably. Um, so I don't want to make it sound like you know I have this massive um, and I got it all nailed either. But that being said, um, of, of the 1,200 people that I have subscribed to uh, these market reports, which have gone out every two to four weeks thereabouts, um, I have probably 300 or so of them that are active users that I can trace or track their link clicks. And um, so then I have a bunch of them that I don't know what's going on. So for me then, um, I, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into what is going on with some of these people. So what I decided to do in January, February, and I just finished it again, is I just said, what's the easiest way for me to ask a, a question without being too salesy? And so what I did is I went to SurveyMonkey, um, and I created a very quick um, two, three question survey. And uh, and I'll tell you what that was and just to, what that is, I guess, in just a second. But I took my market report list and I segmented it of the 1,200. I took 900 that haven't been clicking and then 300 that were. And I, I sent them um, two different surveys, but I sent the survey to the 900 and the survey read like this um, and again I started this in February prior to the events that have unfolded but I just did it again and I don't feel bad about it and I didn't get any pushback about it because I'm true and honest and genuine in my intent and, and the question goes like this in the next 12 months are you planning on buying or selling a house um, that was question number one. If they answered no, then I just said, hey, thank you for completing the quiz if or a survey. Uh, number two, if they said yes, um, have your plans changed due to current events? And I gave them a, a, a drop down options to say um, if they have changed, I guess. So again, very, very simple, less than a minute to fill out. And through my experience with doing that, I was surprised to find out that people who had clicked it zero times were still receiving the emails and still finding value in the emails, let alone the reports, which are you know two totally separate things. Um, so I felt sort of validated in um, sending these out 
to people. Um, and I guess that's that's all I can say as far as what to say to these people, just um, as you're putting them through and into your database, is just ask a very simple question and be transparent about it. Wow, I, I like need that. To and I sent, <laughs> I sent the audience um, that script. In the next 12 months, are you planning on buying or selling real estate? Randy, you know what I would love? If you could send me that survey, and then yeah. I'll share that with the audience. Uh, when I get that. If you and have yeah, it now. Would, yeah, it's super simple. Fun. I'll go ahead and send it to you guys. I'll just take screenshots of the uh, survey. So while Gail is um, adding a whole lot more value than I, <laughs> I'll oh, go no, ahead and no, no, right no. That, That's actually, that's wonderful. I'm I'm just actually reaching out via phone, um, which is a very slow process. Um, and to be honest, I'm really not bringing up real estate unless they have you know, if I've got somebody that's looking at a market report, you know, and it's clicked on it, uh, hold on here, I need to get rid of somebody. Um, yep. And he's clicked on it, you know, five or six times in the last week, I might approach yeah. that person and I know him and I've had conversations with him. I may approach or her, I may approach that person a little differently. But for the most part, my approach is just, I'm just checking in to see if you need anything. Is there anything I can do? Is there any, are you have any concerns? How's your family doing? Um, you know, that type of thing. You know, everybody knows I'm a realtor. So probably 90% of the time they bring it up. You know, what's the market doing? What do you think? You know, I mean, and then it's an easy conversation because they have brought it up. But I just am very uncomfortable right now, to be honest. And it's just, it's probably just my personality. Um, somebody else could approach it different and probably be fine. Um, but my personality right now is with everything that's going on is just to come from a, hey, I'm here if I, if you need anything, if you have any questions. Um, that's pretty much all I'm doing. Yeah. And and then you're saying that it naturally turns into the conversation of of real estate if it, almost if it all chooses and, and, that, and that's all. because right and and i'm gonna say that it my opinion is most likely because you've done a good job of making sure people are receiving the information um that yeah. they would want to receive right and that information is is you, you provided to them as a real estate agent uh, a lot of times we don't realize how much top of mind we are because um, because we're doing the right things and we're just continuing to 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 put those um, that right information out there that is uh, appreciated and, and accepted in the right ways that continues to keep us top of mind. Um, you know, right. believe it or not, we still, we still have to remind people we're in real estate or another. And I like that that because you've been doing market reports and because you've been uh, communicating, connecting with your database of both of you in meaningful ways. And Randy, your question is just really smart uh, because it can apply to so many different, it applies to everybody, right? I think the research that Bob and, and Ben did is that uh, they found somebody lives, everybody lives somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> they spent a lot of money in that survey. Yeah. They did, they <laughs> spent a ton, a ton on that one, so. All right. Okay. So Randy uh, just shared this with us, I believe. Did that come to everybody, Randy? Lovely. Thank I you so, so much. For yeah. I mean, this is just an Love unformatted, it. so I'm pick, copying, pasting it because I screen everything uh, through Grammarly so that I can make sure I'm not spelling bad words or, um, you know, <laughs> we're having we're having a shift change, right? There's a shift in the market, and far too often I've seen yeah. people drop the F in the uh, in the market, and I'm like, well, that applies too if it's a shit market, I suppose, but uh, yeah, my French, but anyway. No, no, I, I would say it's, yeah, it, it's all in the eye of the beholder, though, isn't it? <laughs> right, right, it is, it is. So, in any case, um, I'll tell you what, if, if anybody's interested, um, I, I'm happy to either jump on a call, talk about my process separately, um, and share all the questions in a slightly better formatted um, area. But again, I just use SurveyMonkey and I just use the cheapest subscription. And I quite honestly have really, really segmented my database beyond just market report user and market report not user. Um, and it took a while. And out of that, I was able to get uh, 3,500 um, people that I sent this to and probably about 
eight or ten different segments within my own database. So that's awesome. Okay, so we're 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 putting out this effort. We're going through our database. We're determining who is um, uh, needing help through uh, through necessity and who's needing help through curiosity. And we've done the work and we've sent out the right messages, helped the right people. How can these market reports help us in the in the long run? Yeah, you know, what are your thoughts and 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 how have market reports helped you? Um, and in, in in getting your clients their um, their their goals achieved as well. Well, I think the market report helps the clients in uh, a lot of a lot of different ways, and one of one of them being uh, that we touched on earlier, and that is the the trends. So you know, a lot of times you'll have a a client. You know, everybody when they're getting ready to sell wants to sell at the top. You know, and what? unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we never really know where the top is till it started to go down. Um, so right. I think one of the biggest values in the market report is not just seeing the, um, you know, that your neighbor's house sold or whatever, but seeing the trends in the market. So I think it actually helps the sellers then to make a better decision. Okay, now's the time to jump or not time to jump. Now you're going to have sellers that have to jump for other reasons. They have a job move, you know, um, they retired and it's time for them to go to Arizona. What for various reasons, health reasons, you know, lots of different reasons. But, you know, we all have a large majority of sellers that are selling and they're waiting for that perfect moment. Um, and I think that market reports actually help them to determine um, with our help, you know, um, and I think that when they see those trends, days on market started to get a li little bit longer. Um, maybe they're not getting the um, sell to value or, or a selling price versus listing price starts to dip a little bit. And you can see that all on the market reports. And because of that, yep. it makes our job a lot easier. Um, I, th I think that market reports in a lot of ways do the heavy lifting for us. Um, nice. So I, yeah. I, I can't speak highly enough. And even if you're not using Brevity, I mean, to be honest, I've never used a different one, so I don't really know all the differences. But I know that there are other ones out there. And yeah. even if you don't have Brevity, whatever you do, utilize whatever your system that you have, whether it's your MLS or whatever, to get that data to your clients because they want it. They want yes. to know what's happening with their, their home. So it's not like sometimes we give things out that don't add value to our clients. Like Ben, ben talks about, don't be sending those crappy emails that they're getting from everybody else. If it doesn't add right. value, we shouldn't be sending it. Yes, so I, I call it the um, 10 things you can do with dryer lint email that uh, is, is <laughs> No, that's not helpful to anybody. Yeah. Andy, what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> um, like, how do they help you? How do they help? How, first, how do they help the client, and then how do they help us as agents? Yeah. Uh, well, I've taken listings from people who've called me off of the market report to say, I see that values are going down. Maybe now I should sell my house. Okay, um, fine. And so, so in in that particular case, I never even met the guy, um, like in person ever. I mean, from start to finish, it was just all via telephone and via email. Um, and so, so I was way ahead of this whole shelter at home kind of a thing. But in any case, um, that being said, um, I mean, it's just it's just a lot of market intelligence um, in terms of what is going on. And um, what I like about the way Brivities is set up, of course, and I think most of them are as well, but is it's just kind of a set it and forget it. Um, I know when I was putting those 1,200 people in, um, that was before Brivities White Glove uh, became available and is very affordable, by the way. Um, you know, it took me time because I wanted to ensure that I was getting the uh, the correct information out to them. So I was also researching 
how many bedrooms they had, how many bathrooms they had, what was their square footage, and um, the approximate price range of the house. Now, in doing so, sure, I was able to get them the most accurate information about values in their particular area. Secondarily, at the same time, I was also able to complete holes that I had in my database. So now I have a, a, a accessible list of as Ben would say, would sell sellers. And when I'm talking to buyers who are thinking of buying, now I can match that list from the would buy and the would sell and see if I can find any connections in between those two. Now, as I tell both parties, both sellers and buyers, the, the um, chances of that actually occurring is probably pretty slim but I'm gonna give it a shot, which I'll tell you is a massive differentiator than the vast majority of real estate agents out in the world, right? Most of them are just gonna be like, I'm just gonna watch the MLS and then hope and pray that the right house comes on the market for you and then have them find it and then send it to me so I can set up a showing. So I'm showing that I can add value to the relationship, one. And two, um, I think people, are impressed by the fact that I say I have a list of people and it's growing yep. that would sell in would buy. So it adds a whole lot more credibility in their um, in me and they can, I think, trust me a little bit more. I've had more, I've had a fair share of people say, oh really? And they sit up a little bit uh, and they nod a little bit more when I start talking about that kind of a thing. So for me, it's a differentiator. Just that knowledge that I have that in, someplace so well, that's really uh, then, smart and yeah go ahead yeah, I, I, say, I, I, so, I like so that so then how how does it help me then you know um uh, my metro is very very sprawling my metro encompasses lots of land mass. We're not hemmed in, uh, you know, to, to the east we're hemmed in by wisconsin here in the twin cities and to the west i guess eventually we'll hit North and South Dakota, but that's not for quite a while. And then there's Canada and Iowa to the South. But <laughs> the point is the Metro of where I am right now, there's a lot of sprawl. I feel very, very confident that I know what's going on in all parts of my region or area because of the efforts that I've gone through to better understand um, these uh prospects, if you will, to understand their pricing and their um, um, homes and such. In fact, to the, to the extent to which when I'm driving around this metro, I see these streets and I'm like, I think I have somebody in my database that lives on this street. Um, and I, this happens all the time. And my 17 year old thinks I'm kind of nuts, but you know, he's seen the database and he understands that, you know, that's probably close to truth. But um, so I think if nothing else, it certainly helps me be um, uh, more aware of what's going on in this area. Nice. I, I that's the that's the term we use of making you the local expert. Mm -hmm. Really what it does is it's helping you understand what's happening in each individual area. It uh, gives you a better idea. And the conversations you have with individuals can. Uh, can reflect that. So um, within your your CRM, whatever CRM you're using, you want to be sure that you have as much information as possible, like the physical address of where people live. If you don't, that would be a great task to, um, to, to do during this time. If you're looking for something to do, good opportunity to reach out to your contacts. Find every single person whose email or physical address you don't have, and let's find a way of getting it. And that might so, take us right into what what do I do yeah, next? Go ahead, Randy. Yeah, let me just add uh, a couple of resources to help complete that information. Obviously, you have your MLS and you have your realist or your tax databases that you have. Um, I've used Zillow because it's good enough, you know, for the purposes. Again, I got into this business via cold calling and my Mojo interface that I've used for years has a quick link out to Zillow and at least it's it's close enough for the purposes of setting up a market report. Um, but also I've used Spokio, uh, spokio.com Spokio. uh, for, yep, for that. Uh, people, people.com, P-I-P-L.com. Um, that costs, I will tell you, I've used this a lot and it costs lots of money to help fill in um, 
blanks in your database but that's another good source the other one that i like um is something called neverbounce neverbounce.com and that's uh, what you can use to validate email addresses nice use that to validate uh, that, addresses. Nice. that people.com is a frightening site it is you start yeah. it is yeah, that that you want Cole, Cole Realty Resources is another good one that I've used and paid for. Okay. I found um, again cold call prospecting. I need a three line dialer to be maximally efficient, so I've used Mojo um, for that um, purpose. And within there, they have something that was previously called Reverse Lookup. Now it's called Skip Tracer. Skip Tracer is what they use in the credit industry to hunt people down. It's very very accurate, um, and there's a lot of information there. So between all of those sources, I mean I would imagine I've spent thousands of dollars thousands and thousands of dollars over the years in order to get accurate information about people in order to fill in the database so sure super Gail what are your thoughts on what we do next after we have we've determined people's motivations we've sent them the reporting we actually look and see that they have um, you know some activity what, what are your thoughts do you contact them right away do you um, you know, do you let it ride for a little while? What are your thoughts? No, you talk about when they first come in and you've set them up and now you've seen some information that you that they have actually yeah. engaged. Yes, or absolutely. Or you've gone through your so, database and you realize, yeah, you realize so they're contact, suddenly active. Reach out and contact immediately. Um, no, no, no question. I mean, the, um, the data supports it. The data supports that if the longer you wait, the less your chances are. Um, my yeah. assumption is that they didn't just come on to my website. Maybe they did, but I'm I'm assuming that they're looking for, you know, they came into my database for whatever reason. Maybe they're looking for their home value or whatever. Um, and yeah. they're probably, especially right now, I just make the assumption that they probably hit two or three others too. And I believe that first one to the dance, or, or you know to the party is going to get the dance i mean that's just the way yeah. it works yeah. i mean that's yeah. my assumption so definitely reach out immediately um i'm with randy i don't i've never used as many half of those companies randy i've never even heard of <laughs> i'm I, I know enough about tech to be dangerous i tell people um <laughs> so as far as finding information i use ben verified um mm -hmm which is really good, has gotten way better. I've been using it now for probably two years, and it has in probably increased my ability to get good information over from the beginning to the end by probably double or triple. Um, so their information yep. in there is a lot better. And then Mo Mojo, of course, we've been using Mojo for um, a long time. So between the two, um, normally I can get good information and if that doesn't work then there's always the old door knock um, so door knock. that's that still is a viable alternative um, yeah but yep. right now we're not doing that right now um, sure. but typically if we weren't in this environment we would be still um, knocking on the door and, and getting the information but yeah so let me ask at what point would you um, uh, Randy, what point would you provide them with a CMA? Uh, at Brivity, we have the Brivity CMA, which you know has been Kenny's 555 program. Mm -hmm. When would you uh, have that discussion with them? <clears throat> um, when it's appropriate, I find that I don't I don't want to give that away as um, too early. Um, I want to make sure that, um, well, I mean, to use Gail's uh, analogy, if I'm going to be the first to the party and get the dance, I want to make sure I'm going to go home with them before I give them the CMA. <laughs> so, um, so quite honestly, we're further along the uh, the path. I'm not necessarily going upstairs with them, but I want to make sure at least I get on the couch, right? So. Um, <laughs> So, uh, hey, I just went through the door. No, that was really open. But in, in any case, 
Yeah. So, but in any case, yeah. So I don't get, I don't do the CMA until we're further on, on the process. And quite frankly, here's what I tell people, people being other uh, clients or prospects, if you will, is um, real estate agents. And I probably got, I'm positive. I stole this from Ben, if I'm not mistaken, but you know, real estate agents don't even understand what a CMA is. What, and, and so the, and these people are trained. So what's the likelihood that um, a homeowner, your average homeowner is really going to understand what it means? I found that when I present that information to them, they spend more time nitpicking some of the differences rather than focusing on the macro. And, and they say, well, my house has 20 more square feet. <laughs> so, well, who cares? You know, um, so I don't really go too deep on that um, until we're much further along. But it is a very, very useful tool because for my own purposes, when I do the CMA, at least within Brivity, I have this fantastic little checkbox that can automatically then uh, subscribe them to a drip report. And that's where the value then comes in. If I'm not going to... Um, uh, uh, I guess go upstairs, um, then I'm going to at least make sure I'm staying around, make sure I'm staying around. So, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm with him on that. that I am. Um, I very seldom, um, I probably done CMAs that I've given to clients that I haven't actually met with or been in their home maybe a dozen times in the right. three years that I've been in this or three and a half or whatever. Um, right. I, I found real early on that, like Randy said, that they just want to get nitpicky and tell you about all the differences that don't make any difference anyway. And, and most people don't understand them. I utilize the CMA system with inside, with inside of Brivity, um, mostly for my own information. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can get a good idea. Like a lot of times before I even go over to their um, home, I'll run it just so I got make sure that I've got all my market information straight before I go over and then see their house and be able to tell the differences and then um, don't actually present that to them till we actually pretty much are we're putting it on the market and now we're going to decide okay what are we going to sell it for. Yeah, I do like uh, one thing that I changed. So normally if they're in my database as a prospect or whatever, it, those go out every two to four weeks, ideally every two weeks, unless it gets changed for one reason or the other. Um, but as soon as we're under contract, so they're going to agree to work with me, then I go ahead and change that to every week. Because now I want them to see the values of or what I should say what's going on in their area on a more consistent, regular basis. And I found that conversations yeah. around pricing are far easier once they have that at least macro. And again, the goal here is that we'd like to be able to present to them at least 10 homes um, on, a, on a market report on a, a every other week basis in you know, up to maybe 20, once once you get into the 30, 40, and 50, you probably are casting too wide a net. So you don't want to be micro. You don't want to only show them three bedroom homes. You want to show them two to four bedrooms. You want to cast a wide enough net so that you can at least scoop in minimally 10, minimally 10 every, every other week, preferably 20 in my opinion. So. And you just expand your search in order to I that. would do I would do whatever is necessary in order to get to there. Some homes, and, um, you know, if it needs, if it's a, a million dollar home, there's not a whole lot of those in our area, so I might need to go out significantly further from a radius perspective in order to get that. Um, or if there's some other sort of limiting factors, I just need to make sure that I get I do whatever I need to do in order to get to around that figure. Because otherwise, then every two yeah. weeks, there might not be enough volume coming into the system in order for them to see any valid data. The last thing I want to show them is NA, because um, that would right. add value at that point. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Smart. Smart. All yeah, right. We well, you guys. Move out. Go ahead. I, no, I just said do the same thing. We start tight and then move out. You know, some areas that if it's a rural area, so not, I've had to go out five miles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a metropolitan area, you can sometimes be out a half a mile or a quarter mile and get enough data. So, so yeah, your your settings aren't always going to be consistent all the way around. Oh. Sounds, sounds cool. 
All right. Well, you two have both given us some amazing ideas uh, to, to put into action. I'm, I'm curious on what the audience has taken away, if there's um, anything that has stood out to them that they're going to put into uh, action right away. Uh, any other thoughts on, on marker reports and some strategies around uh, uh, sending uh, maybe some of the messages that go with them? Anything else that you guys have thought of uh, that we have discussed already? Um, no, I, my, my big thing about marker reports is just making sure that you're connecting with your clients when you know that they're, especially when you know that they're opening up them. Um, because a lot of times they'll, and, and I've got the same thing as Randy. I mean, I've got one guy I think that's opened this like 60 some times. The guy, I, <laughs> I swear he opens it like five times a week. Um, you know, and he's just an older gentleman. I've talked to him several times. You know, at some point I'm probably going to get that sale. Um, you know, but right now that's just kind of something that he does. But, but right now especially is a good time to to really keep an eye on things because we are getting a lot of. I mean, I have had people on them for, like Randy said, some of the people that have been on almost since I started, which has now been over two years ago, that all of a sudden have sure. never opened them, and all of a sudden they're opening them. You know, and it, it could be a combination of boredom. You know, they're home, uh, they just had time, um, or it could be a combination of what's going on and now they're getting a little worried or whatever. So your call to action is if you see especially somebody like that um, opening them or hasn't really been opening that often and is opening them more often, then reach out because they obviously, more than likely, they have some questions. Yeah, it, it's um, it's interesting because you might find somebody realizing that two bedroom home they were perfectly happy with isn't going to work for them anymore because they've been stuck in there too long. You know, maybe that house that they lived in that was really big and it had all those things that they ever wanted that they don't use a lot of, realizing that's not as important. I mean, it, the the situations don't always have to be because they are in turmoil or they're worried. It can be a majority of uh, of issues and, and, and things because that's really where we are today. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. We never know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I have some questions right now of, of people that are living in, in the tighter metropolitan areas um, wondering about what's yeah. available further out. Yeah. People you know, want some land to, yeah, yeah. to plant some food, maybe, right? I have a garden. Uh, yeah. Necessity. And I think the only way we can really find that out is to have a conversation with them uh, after we determine what their motivation is. And I, I feel like we've done a great job of giving you guys uh, those ideas. And so we're going <clears> to <throat> just take a quick look here at. Um, all right. I don't know if I've been sharing my screen. Here we go. So I want to thank, uh, there's our ideas for action. And then, so what are your, what are the two to three things that we gave you guys today that you are going to take away? We'd like to hear that. Um, while we're doing that, I want to thank you both so very much for not only being here, but for running the presentation as things uh, were falling apart. I got a, I found on my a Facebook thread, the internet went down in my neighborhood <laughs> for a there short time. And, Timing was perfect. So thank you both very much for managing the webinar while that happened. Um, so I'm going to I'm that. going to put my, I'm going to put the, my hat off to uh, Randy on that one. He 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 was a pro. So I, <laughs> he just kept rolling. Right? He just kept talking. I no credit for that. No credit for that one at all. That was all yeah, Randy. No. No, no, no. Love you guys. <laughs> I'm only going to have to take your word for it. Uh, and the audience is also very appreciative. Um, so yeah. thank you all very much. Take those, um, take all of those things that we shared with you guys um, so that you can uh, use those resources. Thank you again, Gail. Thank you again, Randy, for being a part of today's presentation. And uh, we'll keep you all informed the next time we do uh, our next series of uh, Thriving in a Chaotic and uh, interesting real estate world. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, make it a great day, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.